Hey, welcome to the video. My name's David, and today we're going to be talking about something a little different than what you might find in most people's videos. Oftentimes when you click on a video about a certain topic, you might be learning about the top five reasons of something, and that's not what this video is about. This is not about the top five reasons you should start on the carnivore diet. This is me talking about my personal journey and what got me to the point of saying, you know what, moving forward, all I'm going to eat is meat. And I think that I think that it's it's every person has their own journey of why they're getting to where they're going, and and the decision to cut out everything except for meat. I think that your mind goes to some interesting places. So I just want to share my personal journey with you and to maybe share my why, and uh, and let's get started. So just getting started on this, uh, I think it makes sense just to just to start out with just talking about all the different health ailments I was having, and. I was dealing with quite a few of them. For a young 38-year-old man, I think that uh, having things like hypertension or high blood pressure, uh, fatty liver disease, uh, which they didn't classify it as fatty liver disease. They were just doing ultrasound and show, hey, you got a fatty liver. I was dealing with acid reflux. I mean, I'd wake up in the middle of the night with acid in my mouth. Um to the point to where it created so much scar tissue in my esophagus that my esophagus was closing up. And any time that I would eat, I would often have uh, blockage and I'd have to regurgitate the food. I mean, it was pretty bad. I was dealing with quite a few gut issues. Not to get too graphic, but I'd have to go to the bathroom pretty often and it would take me a while. And it was inconsistent on the consistency. So uh, needless to say, there was issues there. And I'm sure you probably guessed it. I was overweight. And actually, based on my BMI, I would be considered obese. And I think that being obese was probably the biggest factor of all, because I think it probably had a lot to do with a lot of those health issues I was facing. In addition to, it was uh, impacting my mental health. I was struggling. I didn't want to do anything in my life. I really just wanted to sit around and watch TV all the time and just eat more food. The food was what made me happy, but it only made me happy while I was eating it. Uh, once I was once it was gone, I felt guilty and shameful, and I wanted to hide that I even ate anything, which was kind of hard to do when you're walking around being obese. Nobody believes you when you say you didn't eat candy bars, even if you did hide them in the middle of the trash can, like deep underneath things, probably underneath like banana peel, so it looked like you were eating some fruit. I live in Florida, so there's uh, lots of times where we're going to go swimming. We have a pool in the backyard, so I got to take my shirt off and be in swimming trunks. And I don't want, I didn't want to because I was self-conscious. I didn't like the way I looked and it made me want to avoid uh, scenarios where uh, I had to take my shirt off. It also uh, put me in a scenario where, you know, in Florida, we're wearing light clothing. I mean, you don't get to just pile on the jackets and try to cover up all your curves. Uh, my curves showed and I could see it in, in pictures and I would try to hide behind people because I have to say, my wife, she uh, loves doing family pictures whenever we have family outings, whenever we go out to eat. It's always a big group picture. And so I often would try to find my way to the back of the group. And I would use my height as an excuse. It's like, I'm tall, so I should be in the back. But really what my goal was is to make sure people were blocking me and my stomach wasn't shown. And I would grow a bigger beard than what I have now to try to make my face not look so fat and the beard would cover it up. So needless to say, I can keep on and keep on and keep on going, but my weight was a big issue for my body image, for my health, and for my, my mental health. There's this website that I've never heard of before, but it's called the National Institutes of Health. Apparently, it is a government agency. Uh, National Institutes of Health, uh, commonly referred to as NE. Is the primary agency of the United States government responsible for biomedical and public health research? So, you guys can look this up. I just found it because I did a Google search for uh, health risks of being overweight and obese. When I found that page on their website, it showed that there are uh, tons of different issues with being overweight. A lot of different health concerns that you might have. So, let me run through a few of them. They say that being overweight is a contributor to having type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, 
metabolic syndrome, fatty liver disease, some cancers, breathing problems, sleep apnea, asthma, osteoarthritis, gout, disease of the gallbladder and pancreas, kidney disease, pregnancy problems, fertility issues, sexual uh, function issues, mental health problems like depression and eating disorders, body weight image problems, self, uh, low self-esteem. And then there's a whole bunch of references that it has. And, and on this page, uh, for this page, I'm going to I'm going to um, leave a link so you can find it in the description. But I want to kind of cover some cancer things because actually today in some comments, uh, in a video that I had made about eating how much beef you should eat on the carnivore diet, uh, I said, I, me personally, I think you should eat as much beef as you like. But uh, somebody made a comment about, you know, you're going to get cancer from eating all that beef. And you can look up different things and there's probably maybe an elevated risk. But I think this uh, maybe elevation of risks might be relative to the uh, to different things like smoking a cigarette. Smoking cigarettes can cause like 200 to 1000 percent more likeliness of getting cancer or maybe eating red meat is shown to be like a 25 percent. So I don't know the numbers and I'm not science like that, but um, but. This is about as in depth as I'm going to get when it comes to, or at least right now, as, as I'm going to get when it comes to looking at medical and talking about any type of jargon. But the reason I'm talking about this stuff is because this is the kind of stuff I was looking at when I was overweight to try to say, like, Kylie, this is stuff I'm dealing with. I'm facing this. I'm afraid that I'm going to get diabetes. Hey, I've already been told that I have signs of fatty liver disease. Uh, I don't want to get heart disease. I have high blood pressure. You know, these are things that I was already afraid of. So I was looking at all of the different things that I'm potentially going to be facing as I get older. I mean, only a year from now, I'll be 40. Not that 40 is old, but, you know, my, my mom only made it until she was 52. And my grandmother made it until she was 59. And the list goes on of people in my my family that died much younger, and not too, and I'm not too far away from the age that they made it to. So I, I want to try to be a little bit proactive and do something different and break the chain. But back to the comment that the person made about cancer. One of the points that I know is talked about a lot with red meat is that it um, it it maybe has more of a propensity to lean towards causing or being uh, a contributor to colon colorectal cancer, right? So all of this, I'll, I'll have a screenshot up on the screen uh, on the video, but these are all uh, some cancers. And it's a collective um, of cancers associated with being obese and overweight. We got this image of the human body, and it kind of points out to all these different places. We got... and. Uh, Please excuse me if I miss uh, um, pronounce some of these because I I'm not familiar with these words all that well, but um, and I'm also uh, not that uh, school educated. Anyways, um, I only got up to my associates, but uh, we got uh, thyroid cancer, breast cancer, liver cancer, gallbladder cancer, upper stomach cancer, pancreas, colon, and rectum, colorectal. So even if you're not eating red meat, you got a really, you got an increased risk of being, uh, of getting colorectal cancer just from being obese or overweight. So if I got to get rid of all these other cancers and just have the chances of colorectal cancer from eating meat, I think I'm going to take that risk. Um, ovary cancer, endometrium, kidney, multiple myeloma, myeloma. Uh, and actually this one right here, the adenochrom, the whatever, of the esophagus, actually when they were talking about, I was having the closure of the, uh, the scar tissue on my esophagus. This was something that they tested for uh, because uh, they, I mean, they took, they took uh, some samples a biopsies of my esophagus to test for any type of cancers. And then uh, cancer tissue covering the brain and spinal cord. So, Ali, there's a lot of health issues with being overweight, uh, things that might not be impacting you today, but have um, have a big possibility that happens in the future. Uh, with a large portion of that being cancer, a real big focus of that being cancer. And that was what was in my mind when I was thinking about starting the carnivore diet.
I had been on many diets. I mean, it was probably since 2004 or five. I was about 20 years old and I was in the military and I was struggling with my weight. I mean, they make you work out, but I don't like to work out. I don't like to eat healthy. I like, I liked to drink alcohol. I like to eat candy bars. I like to eat fast food. It was, uh, I liked ice cream, pretty much anything that was junk food. And if you would eat it when you were a kid, I would want to eat it. The military would send me through these health classes to teach me about uh, proper health and making sure you're not eating too much of the wrong stuff and teaching you like how much fat is five pounds of fat. And they really invested in trying to make sure that I understood health and what, what, what the benefits of health was. But I was young and felt like I was probably invincible, so I didn't really take that much heed to it. I figured if I spend enough time in the gym, I'll work off all the calories that I eat. And so I did. I spent a lot of time in the gym for short periods of time just so I could pass my PT tests. Living that lifestyle really kept me from being one of the more healthy people in the military, but it kept me in uh, so I didn't get kicked out for being overweight and not being able to pass my PT test. But it was always a struggle. So I tried calorie counting. I tried just not eating. I paid for different programs. There was this one I remember off the top of my head uh, called Isogenics. Um, I'm not wanting to say anything negative about Isogenics, but it, at the at its root, it was a lot of fasting involved with it. They called it cleanses and things. And so you can probably find any of those types of diets that might be called something else. And you'll get results because you're not eating food. I didn't do any of the Weight Watchers or Nutra system or whatever they call it. Those with all the commercials on TV, they all look kind of fake and I wasn't really buying it. But I did have little, you know, shakes for meal replacements and I did a lot of calorie I mean, I had a food scale. I had a food scale at work and a food scale at home and I would weigh things out all the way down to the gram to make sure I didn't go over my calorie count for the day and obsessive because I want to be healthy. I just wasn't having an easy time at it. So at one point in my life, I heard you can eat all the food you want. You just have to eat plants. I was like, wow, I like that you can eat all the food you want. You just have to eat plants. I didn't like the part about just eating plants because I was not, I never did like vegetables. And I mean, I like potatoes, but I would want to put butter on them and things. And that diet did not allow you to use butter or any oils for cooking or anything. If you were going to try to saute something, you needed to do it in water or some sort of like a vegetable broth or something. It was pretty serious and a very strict diet. And I did lose weight on it, uh, but I could not stick to it. And uh, the body that I was gaining from that was, I was getting skinnier, but it was kind of like this, like, um, it wasn't very muscular. I didn't maintain very much muscle. I wasn't consuming very much protein. And apparently what I'm understanding now is that when you are consuming plant proteins, you need to have a, a wide variety of mixtures of plant proteins because they don't have complete amino structures or something to where your body doesn't utilize all the proteins as opposed to when you're eating animal, uh, animal products, the proteins are more complete and you get access to more of the amino acids and Nutrients in the protein there. Uh, it makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about, but really I'm just uh, regurgitating some general generosities of things. But anyways, I was plant-based, whole food plant-based is what it was called. Um, but it just wasn't, it wasn't working for me. Um, but I was still determined to find something. But while I was doing that, my brother actually told me about this all meat diet. And I was like, you got to be crazy. That's bad for you. Everybody knows meat's bad for you. That's why everything's going in the direction of eating all these plants. You, nobody would ever tell you that plants are bad for you. Now, I, I won't be one that says plants are bad for you, but I wouldn't argue with Dr. Chafee about it. Uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee is a, a well-known carnivore doctor expert. Um, he has a lot to say about plants, and I, I would not be able to stand up to him and tell him that plants are good for you. Um, so if you want to go and explore what he has to say, I, I, I recommend you go try that out. 
Anyways, back on the topic. Eventually, I gave up and I said, you know what? I got to find something else. Something where I can feel comfortable eating as much food as I want. I won't have trouble sticking to the diet because what ended up happening a lot of times is I would fall off the bandwagon because I cheated one time and then I just couldn't go back. I, I just stayed, I just stayed off horse, off course. Anyways, somehow, some way, maybe it was Andrew Tate, maybe it was Jordan Peterson. I don't know who it was, but it was somebody, somebody's video came across my news feed and they were like, you got to eat meat or this is all the good stuff that meat does. Or maybe it was just uh, a, an, an accumulation of all of them put together. And I was like, I think I'm going to try it. But at the very beginning of me making this decision, I felt guilty or not guilty, ashamed or, I don't know. I wanted to hide it. I didn't want people to know. I, I was scared to tell my family members that I was going to be trying this all meat diet because I don't know, it just sounded unhealthy and I wasn't, I wasn't, <laughs> I just wasn't sure about it. It just everything that I had heard, especially when I was doing the whole food plant-based uh, diet. Um, and actually there was this book, not to, not to get you, not to encourage you to go check out the book, but it was a um, uh, called the Start Solution by uh, Doctor McDougal, and it, it did make a lot of sense to me. Uh, uh, but uh, but mentioning that and mentioning that diet and Doctor McDougal was somebody I uh, listened to and watched uh, religiously while I was doing uh, the whole food plant based diet, and I just found out the other day that he passed away um, at the age of seventy seven. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily something to do with a diet. He did have a stroke back when he was like 18 years old. So I think that maybe from complications from there. Now I'm getting off track again. Look, you got to stop distracting me. But I finally uh, was able to come out to my family that I was going to be trying this carnivore diet. And really in my mind, I was saying I'm going to do it. But to my family, I was just saying, I'm just going to try it out and dabble with it for a minute. And, uh, and ended up, I got in about a month or so, and I was seeing really good results. Um, but my mother-in-law passed away, and it was a big, like, it was a big shock. We weren't ready for it. We weren't anticipating it. And it kind of really threw me out of my rhythm of, of like, trying to get, like, a stable lifestyle in this way of eating. And I got off track. But when I was, when I was gaining all the weight back from that I had just lost over that month, I looked back on all the different diets that I had, um, that I had been on, and I looked at what my mother-in-law was going through, and she had dealt with uh, a lot of health issues. The main one that she dealt with was diabetes, constantly having. Uh, issues with her blood sugar being like spiking way too high, spiking way too low, getting like, these sweats, and just having a lot of health issues in regards to that. In addition to having heart issues where she needed to go and get a stent, um, stents in her heart or through her arteries um, occasionally. I, I don't remember the frequency, but it was more than once for sure. And she was, she, she was young. Not as young as my mom, but young and it just kind of really hit me and told me you're going to end up like this if you don't make a change commit to it and stick with it and um i just i just i don't want to be overweight and unhealthy I want to do something. And the problem is, is that I'm somehow addicted to, to different foods or to habitual eating or mindless eating. I don't know. I mean, after we get done with this video, I'm going to go out and watch some Big Bang Theory and eat some pepperoni slices probably or some pork rinds or something. I'm, I'm going to munch. And this way of eating lets me eat freely and not really have to worry about overeating and gaining weight 
I've been able to maintain the same weight for a couple months now. At times I have a desire to be a bit more lean, uh, but that's more of a vain thing. And it, it may just have to be that I should get in the gym a little bit more often, which I'm almost never in the gym. And maybe I should, um, maybe I should, uh, use a lower percentage of fat to protein level. I don't, I don't know, but uh, I've never had like this six pack body that's ready for the magazine, but, um, I got more definition now than I probably ever have in my life. And it's just easy to maintain it this way. Um, and I've had so many improvements in my health. I don't have acid reflux anymore. I don't have hypertension. My blood pressure is down to very healthy levels. Um, I made videos about all these, about not all, I made videos about many of these things and you can go check them out in my previous videos. I've lost about 80 pounds now. Um, I don't have the digestive issues that I was having. I stopped snoring. I I don't know. There's just so many different things that, and it's like each day I said, you know what? I used to I used to I used to deal with uh, foot fungus and always having some itchy, peely skin on my feet. And one day I woke up and noticed I don't have that anymore. I didn't hear anybody talking about foot fungus is going away on the carnivore diet. Is that carnivore diet related? I don't know, but all I know is this is this is it for me. Like this, I, my daughter just asked me the other day, "Are you going to keep doing the carnivore diet for a long time?" I said, "Yeah, I think so." And I said, "Like forever?" I was like, "I think so." I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm only only thirty nine got a long ways to go until I'm uh, old man carnivore or old guy. It's an old guy. Yeah. Mitch, that old guy carnivore. He's 77 years old, I believe. And, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be living to 77 or into my eighties. That's a lot of meat to be eating between now and the end of my life. And so moral of the story is you got to find your why and what's going to motivate you to keep going. I know I found mine. I hope that it came across well in this video. So two things real quick before we end the video. One, we're doing a giveaway of an air fryer. You can find the link in the description. And two, there is kind of a big problem that I experienced while doing the carnivore diet early on. So check this video out and I'll tell you all about it. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. See you next time.